platforms. So when I say a platform, you automatically think, oh, that's a digital platform. This is far better than a digital platform. This is meaningful interaction as a community on a social interaction level. So it benefits everyone. This platform is for 7 billion people. It has a great opportunity to bring people together, to tackle social isolation at the same time as we grow our economies for sustainability and regenerating communities from children in the schools with kids to our senior citizens with seniors. We all work together collectively. That's the beauty of this program and this project. It's there for everyone. We've brought it from a tweet to now on the international stage. You know, we've spoken at Davos. We're supporting the Sustainable Development Goals, their implementation in 25 cities worldwide. It'll impact over 100 million people. This is just the start. Where we see ourselves in the future is growing and evolving and supporting communities worldwide in your local community, making a difference on that circular economy model, generating income streams, but then reinvesting it back into the community. But the ownership is with the local community. So it stays local. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Gareth Presh, founder of the World Health Innovation Summit. And uh, this morning's WIS Talks, I am delighted to welcome our guests um, from Kenya, Kisumu Cancer Center. Um, and our discussion is on cancer treatment in Africa. Um, let's start with a round of introductions. And if we could kindly start with Lamek, um, could you kindly tell everyone who's listening or tuned in to this discussion um, where you, who you are and where you're from. Uh, thank you so much, Gareth. My name is Lame Koyochola. I work at Kisumu City Cancer Organization. It's uh, an organization that is focusing on uh, cancer awareness and also we are working closely with patients and survivors in partnership with uh, uh, the main referral hospital around here in Kisumu. We are based in Kisumu. Yeah, so that is all about uh, Lamek. Uh, thanks very much, Lamek. Um, I think we'll go to Helen. Uh, if you could do a very short introduction, Helen, that would be fantastic. I think you're on mute. Hold on. There you go. Uh, you've muted yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh -uh. We seem to be having a bit of a technical problem there. Um, maybe we'll go to Millent, um, uh, Millicent, if I've got that correct. Um, could you do a, a short introduction? I know you're, you're joining us. Hi, Millicent. Can you can you hear us? Or we've lost Millicent. I think she's she's frozen. Um, let's go to Humphrey. Um, Humphrey, hopefully we can hear you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm a Humphrey, a medical practitioner at Seminicas Hospital in this. member of the Kisumu City Cancer Organization as a medical representative offering technical assistance. I'm looking forward to having an interactive session in this discussion. Thank you. Excellent. Let's try bring Helen back in if we can and we can we'll hopefully have a signal. Um, Helen, can you hear us? And uh, I think you're you Helen, just need to unmute. And, uh, I think you're, you just need to unmute. Helen, unmute, unmute, please. Please. Okay. I'm Helen Okello. I'm a nurse working in uh, Kisumu, uh, Jaramogyo Gingo Dinga Chipping and Referral Hospital. Are you getting me? Yes, yes. 
Yeah, I'm Helen Okela Manas, working in Jaramogi, Ogingo Dinga Teaching and Referral Hospital. I'm a palliative care nurse. I'm an oncology nurse. I live in Kisumu, teaching and referral hospital. I'm a Kisumu. Yeah, I'm done. Gareth, you are muted, please. I'm um, sorry there. Um, Millicent, can you hear us? No, unfortunately, we can't seem to get Millicent at the moment. Um, okay, so let's start the discussion. Uh, Lamek, perhaps you could set the scene. Tell us a little bit about what cancer services are available currently at present in uh, Kisumu, for example, in Kenya. And then uh, maybe give us an insight into what you think the patient needs are and what does the future of cancer care look like for Africa? Oh, thank you so much, Gareth. Um, just to start with, um, one of the challenges that we are having here, especially in Africa, is that cancer treatment for a long time, it has been centralized. And um, you realize that patients are uh, uh, traveling very far coming to seek for uh, treatment especially in the major cities uh, around africa so uh, that is one of the challenge that uh, a number of patients are facing in terms of cancer uh, uh, treatment and uh, getting access to the services uh, for a long period of time uh, in kenya we have only comp two comprehensive centers, that is uh, Eldoret and also in Nairobi. But uh, out of these two comprehensive centers, uh, we have several, around seven cancer centers. Uh, uh, the two are government and the rest are private. So there are a lot of challenges in terms of accessing uh, the services uh, for the ordinary uh, uh, for the ordinary citizen who cannot uh, pay for these services. Uh, so far, we are seeing that since the uh, the county government uh, came in place, we are seeing that now they are trying to uh, spread uh, the cancer treatment centers uh, around the country. But uh, so far, you realize that uh, they are only putting up the building uh, putting up uh, small uh, clinics that can only accommodate very few patients, but not as many as uh, the number is, uh, is rising up. Uh, in Kisumu, I can say that uh, we have uh, oncology clinic and also uh, we have staffs and oncologists and nurse, as Ellen will, uh, will speak out. So, uh, in Western Kenya, for a long period of time, Kisumu has been the center for cancer treatment in, in Western Kenya, but people are still traveling from far. Uh, in the future, I want to see a situation whereby uh, anybody uh, anywhere within Africa or uh, within uh, the countries in Africa, are they able to access treatment uh, uh, within their reach not like traveling for a uh, for a far distance to look for the the service yes um, excellent and helen uh, maybe from your perspective from a nursing perspective can you give us an insight into you know what the patient pathway is and i mean what is the situation on the ground at the moment in terms of once you're diagnosed um what what is the formula should we say the pathway in terms of you know local clinics how, how does that process work okay thank you yeah it is a a real challenge when it comes to treatment once a client has been diagnosed yeah if you don't have like in our government hospitals, it is only uh, national insurance health cover, which is catering for treatment. So most of our clients, they don't have a national insurance fund. Some have never even heard of national insurance uh, fund. 
card. So it is a real challenge for them to start treatment. So this one makes them to delay when if it is to be started immediately after the diagnosis. They have to register for the National Hospital Insurance Fund card, which takes um, three months for it to get matured for use. So that is a long, longer period for them. And uh, as the, uh, Mr. Lamek has also mentioned about uh, the distance that they are traveling. So it makes them, when they come, we talk of uh, insurance card, they have to go and plan again for three months. Maybe coming back, seeing them, it will be too late or some may not even come back. Maybe some had succumbed, some, something has happened. So it is not very easy. Very few can manage to have a, a national insurance card as they start the journey, but majority they don't have. They are not even able to get it. So, I mean, that, you know, we all know that it's, you know, so important to be diagnosed early, get appropriate treatment. I think the message here is that, you know, it, it, it has a, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of gaps there. There's big challenges. What you're saying is that we need to work hard in terms of bringing together solutions. I think mainly around investment as well. There seems to be a big challenge there because you know with cancer it's important to diagnose early so you can treat early and um, i'll ask humphrey maybe from the psychological perspective the impact then that that has given that treatments are likely to be delayed um, and given that the diagnosis is made i would uh, envisage that that causes huge anxiety and stress which adds to the to the to the outcomes Oh, okay. Uh, th thank you, Barry. I can say that uh, less than two decades ago, uh, cancer in Africa was more or less a disease which was seen as uh, for the, the rich. Yeah? And uh, the community perspective towards this was like uh, the affected people could afford their treatment without problems in any part of the world. But today, cancer has created all boundaries political, economic, but even religious boundaries. And currently it is affecting even the poorest person uh, in the community. So uh, in terms of uh, the psychosocial support uh, uh, in, uh, to cover these patients during their treatment, uh, mental health uh, needs to be taken care of uh, effectively. And as the Lamek and as Helen have shared, most of these uh, uh, patients uh, uh, don't get the comprehensive treatment uh, they deserve and uh, because uh, of limited resources. So the, they could at times travel or miles to receive radiotherapy, for example, which is exhausting and uh, really affects uh, them uh, mentally attend to patients on a daily basis, most of whom are HIV positive. And uh, the current worry is the upcoming of these NCDs among these patients and the general population. And this do then, I can say, uh, entangled with the limited resources, at some point, a little fatigue and uh, premature mortalities. And this has raised the uh, mortality rates in Africa like 70%, that is annually. So uh, mental health uh, needs to be taken care of in terms of, of this treatment. And looking into the future, I look at the future where uh, a patient can walk in, in a facility, receive these services at affordable rate and walk out without uh, much uh, struggle. And also on uh, uh, the uh, psychosocial Counseling has also been uh, incorporated as a treatment uh, plan for this. And, uh, that's a, 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 what's, uh, a good move toward uh, with cancer. And as case, so when we review this data, we see that uh, there are several opportunities for us.
and also we see we have a lot of work to do to improve on this okay i think we've just seemed to have frozen there humphrey um let me go to uh lamek in terms of um uh, actually i've just seen um uh, millicent has joined us um, i don't know millicent can you hear us um, millicent can you hear us i can hear um okay it'd be great to have your perspective i understand you're a patient and um, it would be really great to have your journey and um, if you could introduce yourself and share your story it would be fantastic okay um i'm millicent 30 years old i'm in Kwale county in kenya I was diagnosed with breast cancer and uh, I've undergone treatment, chemotherapy, mastectomy, and radiotherapy. Now I'm on tamoxifen for 10 years. This is my first year. Yeah. Thank you. And could you share um, just with the audience, because, you, you know, it's important to hear your perspective of where are the gaps? What do you think needs to happen? Um, I am I know that digital technology in the future, I mean, I think, you know, these conversations, you know, having awareness. Could, could you share um, with the audience? How do you think that can you happen? Know, can to help hear your perspective of where are the gaps? What do you think needs to happen? And um, I know that digital technology in the future, I mean, I think, you know, these conversations, you know, having awareness, I don't know if can help. Okay, first, cancer treatment has been a burden to many, many patients because it is so expensive. And so if the cancer drugs can be at least the price to be slashed, or even some drugs could be made free, it will be very good because most of the patients are not, cannot take care of the, the treatment burden. And also where we have slept a bit is the part of the counseling. I presume that uh, when one is diagnosed, the first step should be counseling. Where um, to me, because me, I never underwent any counseling after being diagnosed until when I, I had already started treatment. That is when some counseling came in, but at first it, it wasn't there. So at least the, our medics should put that in mind, that what we really need is the counseling for us to understand what is this cancer, how does it affect you, the treatment plan, how will the treatment affect you, so that at least we get prepared psychologically. Yes. Gareth, you are muted, please. Sorry there. Uh, thank you very much, Millicent, for, for that important insight. It's vital that we have patients um, share their knowledge, share their experiences so that the service consistently can be improved with co-designing solutions. Lamek, you're in the process of doing a lot of work around digital awareness, digital technology. Please tell us about some of the work that Kasumu City Cancer Organization is, is pretty much pioneering in Africa in terms of, you know, Kenya raising awareness about um, cancer treatments, 
but cancer awareness as a, as, as a society because I think that needs to be amplified probably more so now than ever during the time of COVID-19 because that's all we hear about at the moment and and you know we we have a situation where NCDs are being neglected so please tell us about the initiatives that you're engaged in around digital awareness and using digital technology as a way and a means to support patients to support clinicians to share that knowledge Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Gareth. As we know that uh, um, there are a lot of changes uh, when it comes to um, health uh, management and uh, uh, the, the entire uh, spectrum. Uh, one of the things that we are focusing on currently is uh, uh, digital health advocacy. Uh, we realize that uh, when COVID came in, a number of things uh, stalled, especially in Africa here. And uh, one of the best way to reach out to the community, even the patient, the patient currently, was uh, on the digital platform. So, um, we in Kisumu City, Can uh, Kisumu City Cancer, we do uh, we do have uh, Zoom meetings every week and uh, this one we do them together with the doctors uh, and nurses around uh, they uh, bring different topics and uh, what millicent has just said is was our topic yesterday and um, it's very good that since we started discussing about uh, uh, the health issue on digital platform uh, something cropped in and uh, uh, at the referral hospital currently uh, of uh, Fridays are left for um, uh, mental, uh, mental health support for these newly diagnosed patients. And uh, Helen will uh, talk about that. Uh, apart from having Zoom meetings every week, we do a lot of uh, uh, Twitter, Twitter uh, digital advocacy, and also Facebook and Instagram. One thing we are focusing on is that we want everybody uh, to have the information at their uh, at their hands, with in their phones we can reach them. In their sitting room we can reach them. At their homes, at their work we can reach them with the information. And uh, we are also trying to tell the community where they can get services um, easily, at their convenience, and also we are linking them with the doctors so that they don't need to travel as far as from uh, Migori, which is 200 kilometers. We give them the, this, uh, the number of these doctors. They talk, they, bo they book uh, uh, through the phone. So they only come to see the doctor. So that is what we are doing as Kisumu City Cancer Organization. Apart from that also, we, we are also engaging in radio and we are also engaging with the local uh, uh, TV as we do other um, uh, as we do other awareness events such like walk. We do bike riding. We do quite a number of uh, events. Yes. Thanks, Lamek. Um, Helen, are you there? I just want to make sure that we can see you appropriately. Um, uh, if you could, uh, oh, actually, we just lost Helen. Um, Humphrey, perhaps you could come in and give us a bit of an insight into uh, the digital program that Lamek's talking about. And um, if you have any insight of, and talk a little bit about how you can support um, mental health and well-being in terms of cancer. You just need to unmute. We seem to have lost Humphrey there. Um, let me come to Millicent. Um, Millicent, um, can you just give us a bit of an insight into what you think the future of cancer services in Africa should look like um, in terms of from a patient's perspective? How do you think that they can improve patient care from your perspective? And we think, well, unfortunately, we've lost um, Millicent as well. Um, 
Lamech, myself and yourself are left at the moment, um, just waiting for the others to come back in, uh, some technical problems. Tell me, um, in terms of the future for Africa, in terms of African healthcare um, and the opportunities that we see in terms of digital healthcare for cancer services, where do you see the next 12 months given the challenges of COVID-19? Um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Gareth, uh, for that. Uh, COVID-19 has really taught us very many lessons. And uh, one of the things that uh, I would want to see in the next uh, 12 months is that we should reach a point whereby a patient does not need to travel a far distance. A doctor can just um, check on the patient on a uh, uh, digital health platform through either uh, med medical uh, technology uh, whereby a patient at home talk to the doctor in Nairobi, talk to the doctor in South Africa, talk to the doctor in India, talk to the doctor uh, anywhere in the world. So that one in itself also will improve uh, the patient health and also at the same time, both mentally and also physically, the patient uh, health will be improved. And also I realize that sometimes patients are traveling yet there are services that they can get uh, around because uh, I mean, doctors sometimes because don't want to, to do uh, their services to, uh, to without the patient. Uh, but with the digital platform... Uh, hello, are you getting me? We are, go ahead, go ahead, continue. Okay. So with the digital platform, everything is possible. A patient can be in Kisumu, a doctor in Nairobi, and then the patient will explain the condition and the doctor will prescribe whichever medicine and the patient can send all the treatment documents after doing the investigation. And based on that, the movement here and there will be at least uh, managed. Thanks for that, Lamek. Um, Humphrey, um, perhaps you could give us an insight into how digital technology can help mental health and well-being and awareness um, for cancer patients in Africa, given the high prevalence. And then I'd like to have a little bit of a chat with um, Millicent, and then we'll have some final thoughts. I'm free. You are muted. I don't know. For some reason, we're, we're not we're not able to hear you at the moment, Humphrey. It must be something to do with the a, a bit of a technical problem. Um, no problem at all. Let's let's go to Millicent. Um, if um, I'll, I will bring you in on the solo view. Um, Millicent, from your patient perspective, could you tell the audience about what you think is the future of patient care in Africa? You mentioned about the cost of drugs and what would you like to see happen over the next 12 months to improve care? With this digital thing, I think it will help di different areas with different diagnoses. And like when I'm in, I can only meet patients from Kuala, which are not so many. Like now I only know one from Kuala. So the movement issue and then your health also is not good for you to move. So the digital thing will really help a lot. For us to meet different people, get encouragement, and also the the what is counselling, even through the phone. During my 
diagnosis, I wish someone could just call me or have such meetings for us to the future. I hope to see new diagnosis people so that they can get a clear picture of what cancer is so that they can embrace it from the word go. Yeah. Thanks for thanks very much for sharing that, Millicent. I think it's absolutely crucial patients are involved in the journey, and then um, also, you know, the establishment of patient groups would have a profound effect in Africa. Um, let me just go back to Humphrey, if we can, just before um, we go for final thoughts. Um, Humphrey, uh, perhaps you could just give us an insight into the opportunities with digital technology and mental health and well-being for cancer patients. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Gareth. Uh, I hope you can hear me now. Perfect. Uh, well, uh, digital platforms uh, is like uh, the next move for advocacy and uh, cancer treatment in Africa. And uh, as Lamek has shared, for us in the support group, uh, previously before Corona, we were meeting physically. But uh, currently we are doing it uh, online and uh, things are moving on smoothly. In terms of the medical health and uh, uh, medical health and uh, psychosocial counseling, part of this can be done uh, even uh, digitally. If uh, we can come up with uh, a platform where this patient's journey, like for example, personally, I, in the organization, I take care of the patient's journey that is um, working with them on their work plan, enlightening them, enlightening. Uh, enlightening their treatment literacy level after assessment, and this can be done digitally. Since maybe Humphrey is the only clinician in the organization and can't attend to like all patients within uh, the region, physically a digital platform with all this information is a best way to go. Under psychosocial counseling, uh, most patients, myself included, when I was diagnosed with cancer, I can say that uh, I started treatment without psychosocial counseling, and this drained me a lot. So this is a good move that uh, the organization is putting forth, that uh, if it can be implemented that, uh, such that all the patients and the caregivers can be taken through this plan, at least uh, up to the palliative level, so that they know this is a, a, a one work plan that needs to be taken care of from the start of treatment till the end of treatment. And uh, another thing I'll add, in as much as we are doing the digital uh, advocacy and embracing the digital platforms, we, we understand that uh, based on the nature of Africa, we have those uh, guys who may not be connected to the digital platforms or uh, they may not be in a position uh, to understand English in you know, those platforms. So as a, uh, an organization, we are thinking outside the box that we also need to reach uh, the locals uh, through uh, some articles which can be produced uh, maybe on a monthly basis about cancer written in Swahili or the local languages and shared in the periurban and the rural areas so that we just increase this knowledge of both patients on what they need to go through and we empower them psychologically and uh, that can be done. We also do the uh, YouTube videos where we do the uh, Inspire program. Uh, that is where we share uh, our stories as cancer survivors. And this really gives uh, morale and motivate the cancer patients and make them believe that in as much as this journey is hard and training, they can work it well and successfully and maybe have a better life in the future. Yes, thank you, Gareth. Thanks, Humphrey. Uh, Lamek, let's come to you for some final thoughts. Um, there's been a, you know, there's been a note put in here by Dr. Mwande um, saying we need to educate our community on early signs of cancer as many as diagnosed too late. This should be done in a language they can understand. That's a very important point. One of the things that's absolutely crucial for successful cancer treatment will be to have that local engagement and to work locally. And also from an African perspective, you know, the solutions have to come from the community, from your community. Um, please tell us, like, summarize in two minutes 
how you feel you can do that over the next, you know, 12, 36, five years, shall we say, you know, 36 months, you know, what's, what's the plan? Because one of the things I would look, would, would, would challenge you on is um, the, the, the aspect of digital healthcare, which will be great, but in terms of, you know, improving patient care and outcomes, you know, Kenya will need to look at and other African countries will need to have centers of excellence, you know, and for cancer treatment, patient, you know, they need to have a center that they can go to understand that the, tr the treatment is given highly trained specialists. You know, for example, if you have cancer services in multiple areas all over the place, you won't see enough of the prevalence of it. So you need to have specialist centers where people can go and get appropriate treatment. Then their outcomes uh, will will rise. You know, they'll have a better quality of life as well. And, and the outcomes, you know, they have a better, should we say, uh, successful outcome from treatment. So tell me what you think is the next, you know, few years for Kasumu City Cancer and raising that profile. I think you're on mute, sorry. Okay, thank you so much, Gareth. One of the things, uh, according to what uh, Nasibu has just uh, talked about here, is that uh, we've, we are focusing on community uh, local radio stations so that we can bring uh, cancer awareness with the local language and also bringing in uh, the survivors to share their stories. And also, out of that, we realize that uh, people are coming out to seek uh, uh, medical attention, medical services, they go for screening and so on and so forth. Uh, Skisumu City Cancer Organization, in, in the future, we, we want to emphasize more on uh, cancer um, advocacy, especially within the community, uh, whereby um, if we, if we uh, for example, uh, our, one of our goal, in five years to come is to have small satellite cancer screening center for the commonly known cancer within the region um, that is what we call breast and prostate cancer for for the for the men and also to educate the community so that each and every person can take a, an initiative apart from the government putting in place the comprehensive cancer centers within the region but we want to focus deeply into the village so that at least uh, the village people can get to have uh, the full information. Uh, and also we are trying to reach out to the community so that they can uh, register, uh, uh, they can get registered on the national health scheme cover. And, and that is going to reduce the cost and the burden of cancer treatment. Thanks a million, Lamek. Um, listen, we've had a, a very exciting and uh, insight, fascinating insight into cancer treatment in Africa this morning. I want to really thank the guests, um, Millicent we've lost, and Helen, unfortunately, due to technical issues. No problem at all. Um, it was great to have the insight from Humphrey and Lamek. Um, we schedule a number of talks with Kisumu City Cancer Organization, and we look forward to working in partnership with them over the next couple of years. To implement the 17 sustainable development goals around Kisumu City and we're working with other African partners um, in terms of being able to support and help and work together to co-design solutions for local communities. Um, from ourselves here at World Health Innovation Summit we're delighted that you could join this session. It'll be shared across our YouTube and Facebook channels and uh, also across podcasts shortly. Um, our next session is actually around children's health and well-being, good health and well-being. It'll be hosted by Dr. Manuela Boyle. It's coming up uh, very shortly. Um, but from ourselves here at uh, World Health Innovation Summit and Kasumu City Cancer Center in uh, Kasumu, Kenya, thank you very much for joining us and uh, we'll close this session. So thanks everyone and bye-bye.